Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from TutorialCheckIt.com here with another awesome and late Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have been wondering where I've been these past couple of weeks and I'd like to give you an excuse but I don't know, just too much has been going on for me to think about right now and I don't know, I'm just kind of tired in general so I'm not even going to worry about it. However, I would like to point out that Eli isn't going to be around for a while, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to be making any videos with him, like Minecraft videos, and he won't be able to post any tutorials or anything like that, because he's kind of out on vacation for like another week and a half or something, so I'm here manning the fort all by myself, which is kind of cool, yet kind of, like... I don't know, it's kind of a struggle for me, I guess, because I have a lot to get done, like website stuff and videos, and I don't know, I'm just rambling on, so I'm just going to go ahead and get right into this tutorial for you guys, and what we're going over is basically just a little bit of animation, just kind of get, uh, giving you the basic idea of how animation works in Photoshop. And so, this is what we're going to be making today. It's kind of a... um loading bar sort of thing. Uh, I don't know, you, you see it all the time on like Facebook when crap is loading, but this is slightly different. And this is what it's going to look like. Play. So as you can see, it's just this dot just kind of moving across these uh, little, uh, I don't know, these circles, I guess, and it just kind of looks like a little loading bar sort of thing. So this is basically what we're going to be making today. And so before we actually get into the creation of all this, I'm pretty sure you guys want to know how it all works. And so uh, let's go ahead and go down here to the animation preset. Let's see if I can, like, come on, let me, like, resize this. No? Not feeling it? Normally it lets you, like, resize this dock, but I guess it doesn't really let me. Anyway, so down here is our animation little window dealio. And right now I have it set to frames. There are two modes that you can do for this kind of stuff. There's frames, which is this thing right here. And the other mode is a timeline. And frames are usually meant for things that are kind of jumpy. Like, I'm sure you've seen those jumpy GIF animations that is uh, basically just a bunch of pictures meshed together to make an animation look. And what I mean by that is it's literally just one picture, two pictures, three pictures, four pictures, five pictures. Ta-da! Just, uh, just a couple pictures, and each one of them is there for a certain period of time. In this case, if you look a little closer, it says 0 0.1 second. That means each one of these pictures lasts 0.1 second before moving on to the next one, and then looping back to the first one. You see right here, I have it set to loop forever. So when you click, when you click play, it goes through each one of these and just keeps looping back and forth. And so that's basically how that works down here. And if you don't have this little animation dealio at the bottom, you'll want to go to Window, Animation, right there, and that'll bring it up for you. And it also gives you a measurement log. I don't really know what this is, so I guess we just won't really worry about it. And if you want to tinker with the... Uh, the keyframe timeline that you'll just want to go over here to this little icon give that a click and then it'll convert everything into a little timeline and then if you've ever done um, like after effects based stuff then this is basically just how that works so um, we're not going to get into that in this tutorial we're uh, we're just going to stick with the basic little animation like so with frames and so let's just go ahead and get into the creation of all this mumbo jumbo. So let's go to a new document. And we're just going to go with a 480 by 100 document. A little different from what we're uh, used to, but eh, we'll, uh, we'll just get through it with this instead. Okay then, let's see, convert this back to a regular frame animation. And so what we're going to do is fill in this first layer right here with black by hitting Alt Backspace because we've got black as our foreground color back here. If you're on a Mac, that would be Option Delete. And just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and rename this uh, Background. Okay, so what we're doing here is going to be pretty precise. If you look back here, all of these are nice and evenly spaced and all that good stuff. So we're going to want to make a couple of different rulers in order to make that work out properly. 
So we're going to go ahead and bring up our rulers by hitting Control R or Command R. And uh, make sure we're set to pixels on here. And then you can either start clicking and dragging uh, you know, lines to the, the halfway mark here and the halfway mark over here. Um, you can do that or actually we can go back and not worry about those rulers and we can go to view and we're going to click new guides and now you can see that we can make guides at uh, certain pixels in the document and so we're just gonna do a new guide horizontally at 50 percent real quick like so and then we're gonna do a new guide at 80 pixels and then we're gonna go to new guides and do 160 pixels and so basically that's what you're gonna keep doing you're just gonna keep adding 80 80 80 80 80 80 so just keep doing that until you have just a couple more hey where's my dialogue new guides please thank you all right so where was I at 240 I believe 320 and 400 okay so these are all of the guys that we are going to be using and so we're gonna start off with the very very middle one and so let's go ahead and go over here and grab our ellipse tool and we're gonna make sure that we're set to shape layers this little icon right here not paths and it's just gonna be this first little thing right here create a new shape layer make sure there's no style on it and the color we want that to be white so I'll just go down to my foreground and background color and swap that around and voila we have our color set to white and now I'm gonna zoom in uh, whoops didn't mean to do that so we're just gonna go ahead and zoom in and I'm using my scroll wheel for that uh, you can use the zoom tool or whatever you prefer and I'm gonna hold uh, I'm gonna click and drag from this uh, little middle uh, kinda crosshair sort of look thing looking thing <laughs> And I'm going to do that while holding the Alt and the Shift key, or the Option and Shift key if you're on a Mac. And the size of this circle is completely up to you, but uh, make sure it's not too big because then it's going to start running into the other circles. So keep it relatively, you know, a good size. So maybe around, right around there is pretty good in my opinion. And so now this time we're going to hold the Alt key or the Option key before we click and drag from the middle. So hold that key, click, drag, and then hold shift. And make it a little bit smaller than your original circle and let go. And that'll actually crop out that center area of the circle for you. And let's see, looking, looking pretty good so far. Um, next thing we wanna do is add in the little, uh, I guess the little spokes on the, the sides there. So what we're going to do to make that happen is swap to our rectangle tool right here. And then go to that middle point, click and drag, and then hold the Alt key or the Option key. And then just kind of make a bar just kind of going up, uh, down the middle of it like so. So we'll try and make it the same size as the circle. Kind of failed on that, so I'll hit Control T. And then click and drag this in while holding the Alt key and that's looking a little better so we'll go ahead and hit the little check mark and commit those transformations looking pretty good and so now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this by hitting control J or command J if you're on a Mac and then we're gonna bring up the transform tool by hitting control T or command T if you're on a Mac then we'll click and drag outside of the box while holding the shift key to make this uh, horizontal like so and then we'll check mark that and then what I'm going to do is select both of these layers by shift clicking to shape 2. And then I'm going to bring up the transform tool again, control T. And then click and drag while holding shift until it looks like an X, like so. It's got a kind of a cool looking design going on here. And check mark that again. And now we're going to select shape 2 copy, go down to shape 1, and merge all of these together by hitting control E. And let's rename this circle right now, just for the heck of it. And now we're going to go down here to the uh, layer mask icon and give that a click to add a layer mask to our circle. 
And now we're going to grab our elliptical marque tool and make sure that we're uh, at zero feather because we don't want this to be feathered at all, anti-alias and a normal style and all that. And click and drag from the center while holding the Alt and Shift key. And we're just going to make a circle about, eh, we'll make it about yay big. And then with that, we're going to uh, hit Alt Backspace to fill in our mask with black. And that'll hide up that area of the circle for you. And so now we'll just go ahead and hit Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. And so the next step is to go ahead and make the actual dot that is inside there. And so we're going to go back to our ellipse tool. And we are going to click and drag from the middle while holding Alt and Shift again. And we'll just make it yay big right there. And then what we're going to do to make this look a little, little bit more interesting, um, if we go back and zoom in, you'll see that this had kind of a little divot thing kind of going along. So we're just going to go ahead and make that happen. So in order to do that, we are going to duplicate this uh, shape one by hitting control J. And then let's go ahead and turn that off and go to our original shape one and hit a control T to bring up the transform tool. We'll size it down just a little bit. Doesn't really need to be anything specific. So we'll check mark that and we'll go back to our shape one copy. And with that selected and turned on, we're going to apply a layer mask to, oh, actually, no, don't apply that layer mask just yet. We're actually going to go to the rectangular marque tool. And we're going to click and drag from the center while holding the alt key. And we're just going to make a box that uh, just kind of goes straight up and we'll make it about, uh, yay big, actually works for me. So we got this vertical little uh, marque going on. And we'll go ahead and click that uh, layer mask icon down here to mask that off. And as you can see, it just keeps that little square section of the, uh, of the circle there. And so now what we're going to do is control click or command click the mask for that to load it up as a selection. And now we're going to go to select, transform selection and click and drag while holding the shift key to make this horizontal and then check mark that and then fill in that selection with white by hitting control backspace on the mask and voila um, I guess I could have made it a little uh, wider but uh, whatever we're not gonna worry about that too much that it's actually kinda looking kinda cool anyway so we're good here Alright, so the next step is to select both of these layers and merge them together by hitting Control e or Command-E if you're on a Mac. And we are going to rename this dot. Awesome. Alright, so now we've got all of this set up, so let's go ahead and start duplicating that circle. So we're going to go to the circle layer, and we're going to go to our Move tool. And while holding the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac, Click and drag this to the left and hold shift to make sure it doesn't move up and down or anything like that. And it should automatically snap to the center of that little uh, crosshair. And so you just do that again like so and it'll snap and align it for you. And that's the reason that we made these rulers because it, um, it makes it so that things will automatically align to them. Which is pretty handy. So once you've got all of these duplicated and aligned to the rulers, you're going to want to select all of these copies of the circle. So circle, copy, copy two, three, and four, and merge those together with control E. And I'll just rename that back to circle just for sanity's purpose. And right now, uh, we're actually going to need to move the dot all the way over to the left. So click and drag that to the left while holding the shift key and make sure it aligns to that little crosshair right there. And so now what we want to do is go down here to our animation little uh, dialog or whatever you want to call it and set this little uh, this time I guess to 0.1 seconds. And what you're going to do is click this little icon right here. It kind of looks like a create a new layer icon but in this case it actually duplicates your current frame. So you give that a click it duplicates that frame 
and then what you're going to want to do is click and drag that dot over to the next circle like so and as you can see down here you can see that that um, that transition between the first frame and the second frame so make another uh, layer click and drag it make another one click and drag it and make the last one click and drag it and you don't need to make another layer to click and drag this all the way back because it automatically loops to that first frame. So you go do 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 do, and then it goes back. And then make sure that um, the repeat section right here is set to forever. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control H to hide all of those uh, rulers and such, and hit Control One to zoom out just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and hit the play button and see the magic. All right, so pretty, uh, pretty simple. The, the hardest part of this was just making all this cool little uh, jazz going on. Um, so hopefully you guys learned a little something, something from this. Um, it's just really, really basic, giving you the idea of how frame animation works. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll do my best to you know teach you guys how this works in later tutorials as well we'll probably get into the the, the timeline animation and also um, let me stop this real fast if you guys want it to be cropped a little bit better to have a little bit more balance um, so I'll bring those rulers back with control H um, what you want to do if you want to crop this a little bit better is uh, add some new guides at 40 pixels and uh, I think it was 440 oops not 4440 440 pixels and then right there so we'll grab our crop tool and just select that area right there and then you can check mark that to crop it and there you go it's a little bit more uh, better spaced I guess or better cropped I don't know in any case, so yeah, this was pretty simple. I hope you learned anything, uh, something new here. Um, so sorry if this was, you know, a little later than usual, but um, hey, I'm doing my best getting you guys tutorials and all that. So feel free to send us suggestions and all that crap to our YouTube channel. And um, also, you definitely need to go to our Facebook page because there's a lot of people on there posting stuff, giving each other ideas, getting criticism and all that. So go to our Facebook page, check that out, and you know what, I'll uh, see you another day guys, later.